We're reading from 2 Kings. Uh, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master. Because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram, the man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. And she said to her mistress, If only my Lord were with the prophet in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent you to my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and he went away saying, I thought that for me, he surely would come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I have not washed in them and become clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you have not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a present from your servant. The this word is the word, word of the, the Lord. Lord. As a reminder, and for our guests who are with us today, we have been exploring the biblical story following the narrative lectionary, which follows the sweep of God's story. The approach I am taking is more in exploring who God is in these ancient texts and the divine play of God's spirit at work throughout all of history. We've also been thinking about who we are in God's story and how we fit in to the ongoing mission of God. In working through these texts, I find myself 
more drawn to the unexpected characters and voices within. The ones with only one or two lines. The nameless voices who are not typically lifted up and who are often left out. But they carry the story along. Questions I hope each of us will ask and consider in reflection are, who are we in this story? Do we feel vo voiceless or called to speak? How will we respond faithfully, hopefully, and obediently to the God of restoration and salvation to the great needs and brokenness of the world around us? Who are the saints in this story and in this room? Will you pray with me? God of promise and great love, Open our hearts, our eyes, and our minds to see you, hear you, so that we may respond to you in ways only you can imagine. Amen. The story of Naaman and the healing of his leprosy presents a dueling cast of characters with competing ideals and sets of beliefs. A great man, a servant girl. A king of Aram versus Israel's king. Freedom versus captivity. Gods with a small g, God with a big g. Extreme wealth, a muddy river. Ordinary versus extraordinary, control and letting go, mighty and powerful, prophets and slaves, magical expectations, faithful obedience, self-righteousness versus vulnerability, love and enemies, humanity's brokenness, God's love and grace. As the story goes, Naaman is a great man. He has led the armies of the king of Aram, as we know as Syria today, through raids and war over the king of Israel and his armies and people, and has won the great fight. There is no particular monarchy lifted up as God's king during this particular time of God's history. But the ever-changing rule and reign of God is making a shift to the prophetic voice and those who remain faithful to God's covenant with Israel. In the midst of it all, Naaman is afflicted with leprosy, a horrible skin disease that typically would send most persons to the outskirts of society to suffer and eventually die as their skin sloughs off and eventually limbs as well. It is through Naaman, as scripture tells us, that the Lord gave victory to the king of Aram in an, an interesting turn of events for the God of Israel and the hope of God's people. But he has leprosy. He is not exempt because he is a great man. He is now held captive himself within his own body. The voice of the young servant girl dares to speak up. A servant girl, which is a nice way of saying she is a slave. She was taken against her will by Naaman and his armies. She is serving Naaman's wife as her, her mistress. 
She's living there against her will, against her choice. She is living in a foreign land without family, without friends, and without her own home. It's interesting to me how many of the articles and stories about this young captive seem to skip right past her without much mention at all. But there are no small parts in God's story. And she plays a pivotal, vital role when she delivers her line, if only my Lord were the, with the prophet who was in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. It is in the inbreaking of options for restoration and God's affirmation of Israel that are pushed through the biblical narrative by the most vulnerable people in society, suggests Lisa Thompson, who is a professor at Union Seminary, a black woman, a Baptist, who found herself called to ministry who found herself called to help lift up the voices of marginalized people and to make sure women's voices were heard. She goes on to say, we must include the voices of those held captive by gendered hierarchies, by the imbalance of power and war or physical illness, or by religious expectations training, and traditions. God is so much bigger than all of this, and yet still shows up in the still small, vulnerable, daring to love, obedient in faith voice of a young captive girl who seems to understand the ideals of a God with a capital G. The ideals that she has been taught as a child of God and Israel. God has said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall not hate your brother or sister, as it says in Leviticus, or seek revenge, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself, for I am the Lord. The young servant girl is living obediently, Faithfully, she seems to understand what God desires for God's people to love our enemies, regardless of how we might feel about them or what they may have done. Jeff Cohen, some of you have probably read and heard his name, the president of Algany General Hospital, who attends synagogue, in a tweet that has gone viral says, this is what Jewish people are taught to do. It is not our job to judge those who may be our enemies, but it is our job to care about them. Cohen led the medical team that tended to Robert Bowers after he was shot following bursting into the Tree of Life Congregation Synagogue and opening fire on worshipers. He says, my job isn't to judge him. My job is to care about him. In an interview, Cohen said, many of the medics who assisted Bowers in recovery are Jewish. And he calls them heroes, perhaps 
saints. Cohen also said he personally took time to go meet Bowers because he was curious about this man. He said in the interview, quite honestly, he's just a guy. He's a mother's son. And how did he get from where he is, from that, to where he is today? That's going to be a huge debate that we have to wrestle with in our society. Rachel Bogle, morning traffic reporter, tweeted Channel 4 News that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that, as Martin Luther King Jr. has spoken. She says, I applaud Dr. Cohen for his strength and compassion. To be honest, I don't know if I could do what he did without being overcome by emotion. The servant girl acts with compassion. And Naaman's wife delivers the message. The king sends his approval. Naaman packs his bags and his wealth and his great entourage and heads to seek the king of Israel's healing. But does not ask for the prophet first. The king, as we're told, freaks out, tearing his clothes, concerned about a manipulative plot. But Elisha, the prophet of God, the servant of God, calls Naaman to him and tells him to go wash in the muddy Jordan. Wash and be clean. It's the servants' voices that keep the story moving along. What did they know when they stepped out in faith about their God? What did they understand about how God might be using them and their voices towards a greater plan to heal more than a man's illness, but perhaps provide a cure for a divided land and people? Naaman finally submits, finally humbles himself and enters the muddy waters of the Jordan. After doing what he was told, he goes to the king and presents himself and acknowledges the God of Israel as the one and only God to be worshipped. Who are we in this story? Do we wear God's hopes and desires on our hearts and post them on our doors and teach them to our children? Are we brave enough, courageous enough to be vulnerable enough to speak out and speak up on behalf of healing, out of compassion, because this is what God teaches us to do. We all have a voice. Let us use it. Amen.